All right, we're back for part two of urinary imaging. These are just some common exams that you might see uh, involving radiology and the urinary system. So uh, the IVU is the intravenous or expiratory urography, retrograde cysto and voiding cystourethrogram, retrograde urography, and retrograde urethrogram. In any of these, the contrast method of injection is either going to be retrograde or antigrade. The retrograde contrast means you're injecting the contrast against the normal flow. In antigrade, it will be with normal flow, so it will be as um, your body normally excretes it. So one of the other. Uh, the IVU is where we're going to start. It was um, called previously an IVP. So you might see that in protocol books or um, texts that have been there for a while might call it an IVP. Um, textbook is now IVU. So, uh, as the name indicates, it involves an IV. So we're going to place an IV um, and inject contrast. It's going to highlight into the kidneys, drain through the ureters, and into the bladder. It is a functional test using the anti-grade contrast method. It's going to demonstrate the functional ability of the kidneys. It'll evaluate for any pathologies or abnormalities within that system. Um, so the collecting system of the urinary system. And then some indications versus contraindications. So it could be stones, whether kidney or bladder stones. Uh, hydronephrosis is your enlarged kidney. Um, kidney or bladder cancers. A double collecting system ectopic or horseshoe kidney, sometimes it's just simple as flank pain in the back, and it turns out it's not their spine, but it could be kidney stones, which is why we include the kidneys on our AP lumbar spines. Contraindications with almost all of these studies, right, with contrast media is allergy to contrast, um, but with this one, because it's specific to the kidneys, um, diabetic patients, one with renal disease or renal failure, uh, or multiple myeloma um, or sickle, sickle cell anemia might be a contra contraindication for having an IVP. Uh, pregnancy, um, patients that are also taking metformin or glucophage medication, um, they need to avoid taking that for 48 hours after, um, so we'll need to know about that medication as well. For the IVP or IVU, sorry, I'm used to calling an IVP, um, it has a timing to it, and each department will have a different protocol, but most often it always starts with a scout abdomen. If there's tomograms, they'll be done at that after injection. Um, it could be just supine KUBs or oblique abdomens to evaluate the kidneys or ureters. And these are going to be at time intervals, and usually your department will say, do this at 5 minutes, do this at 10, do this at 15, and then do a post void, things like that. So let's go through those imaging. So scout abdomen, you guys know how to do a KUB, right? For IVU, the patient will need to empty their bladder first, because if we inject contrast in and they have a full bladder, the urine will dilate um, or dilute the um, contrast media. We don't want that. So have them empty their bladder. You're going to just do a plain KUB to start and mark it as a scout. And then this is just a um, AP for IBU. It looks just like a KUB, right? You include the kidneys, the ureter, or the bladder. And we use expiration just like we normally would. The oblique abdomens for IBU are to demonstrate either the kidney or the ureter of interest. So we'll use posterior obliques. So you're going to do an LPO and an RPO. They are 30 degree obliques. To demonstrate the kidneys, the kidney of interest needs to be the side up. So an LPO, demonstrate the right kidney. The ureters are the side down. So an LPO that demonstrates the right kidney is going to demonstrate the left ureter. So when you raise the side up, Yes, we are seeing this kidney clearly, but the ureter falls into the spine. So we're going to see the ureter on the side down, kidney side up. And this was just a breakdown of what you would see um, on elevated side versus downside. Post void, 
You're going to ask the patient to um, go to the bathroom and void out any contrast that they think they can. Most locations have you take a post void KUB. Some request it to be upright. They might be looking for um, prolapse of things or this nephroptosis, which is a positional change of the kidneys. You're just going to want to make sure you document that it's the post void. Um, and these were just certain examples of IVU imaging. So you can see the contrast has highlighted the kidneys. There's an arrow here pointing to some areas either of stones or um, things going on there. Here are your kidneys, ureters draining into the bladder. And this is an example of an oblique and they marked it 22 minutes. So they annotated the time on that. You can tell it's an oblique. We see Scotty dogs here. We see one um, with the kidney here, the ureter has fallen in. Also, you can always tell by your pelvis that iliac wings are not of equal size. And so this is a, clearly a positive find here on this one. Look at the size difference in the two kidneys. This one is clearly enlarged and has um, something going on. Some departments may have access to tomography and some may not. Some might just not use it any longer. And this was something we did quite a lot um, when I was a student and used a tomogram machine. Um, but I will show you guys, I uh, will try and find uh, or make a video myself, maybe in one of the miscellaneous rooms, or maybe you guys could do it and grab Dave and make him do it, um, where we use the volume rad option and so it's an exposure that starts at one end usually at the head or the foot and does a sweep of exposures and you are going to get sort of a kind of slicing of bread like a loaf of bread you're going to get slices through the patient's body and specific levels of the kidney to see that area we used to have to measure the patient and select each one as we did these, but you guys do not have to do that anymore. Um, so there's just a couple of terminologies that we might um, see. This is a very older um, exam, so I don't think this would be uh, necessarily a major focus of your registry, um, but that a tomogram demonstrates um, the image in a, in a specific plane and it blurs the structures sort of around it. Um, there's a fulcrum, which you can see here is the, your pivot point. Um, and so I'll try and take a video in one of the miscellaneous rooms for you of how it actually works if you have downtime, it's pretty cool. Uh, compression, I've never seen this done either, but I know we had it in the cabinet at some point. Um, it's a way to enhance the filling of the proximal ureters. So you would put this compression over the patient um, it allows for a more of complete study, um, but we shouldn't use it if there's any possible stones or masses um, or recent surgery or severe pain. Hydronephrosis, you've probably seen this term before, uh, but it's the dilation of um, the kidneys in the draining system. It is sometimes seen in pediatrics in, uh, while they're still in vitro uh, via ultrasound, so they might see it before uh, the baby even arrives. But so hydronephrosis is really the swelling here or the dilation of that. A double collecting system, these are, I, I always think these are neat when I see these. I actually saw one recently on a VCG. Um, but it's called sometimes a duplex kidney and there's actually two ureters coming from um, the single kidney and draining into the bladder. So they have um, a double system. So you can see it here, they have two ureters. So something fun. A horseshoe kidney, I think these are interesting as well. It's also called renal fusion. Uh, they really, they fuse together in um, a horseshoe shape. And so you can see that example here with this um, abdomen x-ray or IBU x-ray here of a horseshoe kidney. Nephroptosis, um, <laughs> this picture makes me laugh every time I see it. And um, it's, it's when the kidney drops or changes position when the patient goes from supine to upright, um, which is why sometimes upright imaging is important during this IVU. It's more common in women. Um, it's not something that I'd seen before, but so supine to upright, you can see the kidney drops further down into the pelvis. You'll probably just remember this picture and it'll make you laugh. And then Wilms tumor, um, 
is also called a nephroblastoma. It's a type of childhood cancer that starts in the kidneys. It's the most common type of kidney cancer in children. And so you can see where um, the tumor forms. And so we might um, see this as a terminology involved with pediatric uh, kidneys. And I'll be back for the next part.